Uh, <laughs> sorry, I have to laugh because I have two goals. Number one is to to let my art speak for itself, and number two to be discovered, to be seen. Because I really don't have Plan B at this point. <laughs> Hi everybody, Stella here. Welcome back to my studio. I just need to take a moment because I am actually very tired today, but I insisted I had to shoot this video because I would like to share with you all, especially I know I have a lot of artists who's watching this. I want to share with you guys my very first Surtex show, and this is behind the scene of how I'm actually preparing for it. Ta-da! If you ever done any trade shows or licensing shows, you know that you have to come with a lot of giveaway cards and these are what they are for. And the way I have done it is that every single buyer who walks through or past my booth, they may not want to talk to me immediately, but I want them to have something that they can take away. So I divide them by categories. Here is my stack of fashion giveaway cards, you know, some floral with the abstract. Uh, landscape, all the animals are over here. A lot of the buyers coming um, since the show is going to be made. That means they're buying into a holiday. So this is the holiday deck. And then last but not least, the floral and more florals. So the idea is that they can just take this one with that one, whichever one they want to take so they remember who I am. What I have learned from um, working in fashion for almost 20 years, and I used to do a lot of fashion shows, trade shows, is that the sales usually doesn't happen on the spot it happens during the follow-up and the follow-up will only happen if they remember who you are so you have to be able to give them something that they can take away with obviously as a professional artist you always have to have your business cards ready um, i think i printed out like 500 of them it's it's a lot more than what's needed but hey you never know it's always better to have more than running out of cards it's usually quite embarrassing Again, another thing I learned from doing enough trade shows in my life is you always make sure you come with enough battery powers. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed this, the last 10 years they started to charge you battery or like even just using an outlet. They even rent you extension cords. I refuse to pay for all of it. So I come with my two trusted battery packs and this one is actually a car battery. So if these two fails, I don't think I will ever run out of these two, but just in case I still have this heavy duty one that I can use and most importantly not all the trade shows will provide internet for free so you have to have your own Wi-Fi hotspot um, obviously this will cost money but it's never gonna be as expensive as you know renting it from any trade show I just don't understand why everything is so expensive now but here we are All right, last but not least, obviously, I will be bringing my portfolio books and in front of me, I have them in two sizes and forgive me with all the cat hairs, I got three, so I can't really escape them. And the reason why I have two different sizes is because for certain artworks, I realized that they're more suitable for stationaries, for children's book illustration, or even like paper products. So you don't really need to print them huge for people to see the detail of it. This is actually the watercolor floral and I do a bit of a watermark, you know, I mean, people are constantly taking photos of your artwork. Just make sure that you always have a watermark. It could be very faint, but it's right there. Um, I've never had this happen to me, but I heard enough horror stories. You know, there's always people trying to steal your work. I mean, for the most part, people are nice, so I don't think that will happen, but you never know. This is Geo. The way I have organized the portfolio book, as you can see, is that I make it like Geo Block, and I forgot what the AL stand for. <laughs> I should know this by now. Landscape. Abstract landscape. There we go. Thank you so much. That's my husband right there. And then this one is uh, celestial. So all the spiritual Buddha heads is right over here. So depending on what the buyer is looking for, I'll flip to that page so they can look at it. And these are my animals. Now, the bigger book is basically organized the same way. But obviously the artwork is printed much larger and you know, this is because certain artworks they're meant to be wall decor or they may go on to some sort of home goods that's larger in size and I really want the buyer to see the full value of it. That's why I printed 
a lot bigger. Um, I will also be having my um, iPad and my computer there in person if for whatever reason they want to see the digitized version of it. Every single artwork is coming as a Photoshop PSD file with layers. So let's say you license it from me, your own art team can actually go in there and make some tweaks and changes to fit your product better. For the overall booth design, if you ever done any trade show exhibition, you are actually responsible for that. If you're based in New York or New Jersey, I like to work with this company called eHot Graphics. Description, just go check, company info is right there. I am actually in charge of creating a ginormous fascia design with the booth number, my company name. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is like over 94 inches long, so I'm not gonna open up the whole thing, but pretty much I will be pasting this onto the booth wall at the fascia spot. And fascia is basically where you put the title of your company. So depending on the type of booth material your booth is made of, uh, for mine it's actually PVC plastic. So I was advised to use a uh, double-sided tape. And because I printed almost all of my artwork that's going to go onto the booth in really fine paper, like archival paper, so I'm actually using this particular double-sided tape that is reusable so I can scrape it out, out of the art prints when I do no longer need it and recycle it. Um, if you're interested to buy this double-sided tape, purchasing link is listed in the description down below as well. So I got three full rows just in case I need more. Again, when it comes to shows like this, always bring more than what's needed. I got a, a six by eight feet booth. I realized I can actually put out about 38 artworks. Some people will print a ginormous collage of all the works they want to show. I decided to print it in my own home, so I did it individually. It's not a collage at all. This will actually go onto the counter because they are a little bit smaller. And um, if you are an artist on a budget like me, trust me, it's easier to print if you own your own printer to control the cost. And just to show you that this is actually 70 by 22. When you see this artwork, Studio Lestra Inc., my little um, QR code, art by Stella Chen, that's my booth, A21, just walk in and say hi. So art licensing is basically the artist gives the right to print a select image onto a product that is manufactured by a manufacturer. And this manufacturer can be a company in any industry such as home goods, home decor, wall art decor company, or even stationaries, children's book illustration, publication company, paper products, and the list goes on and on and on. And one thing I do want to clarify is that just because you give the right to license does not that mean you no longer own this image. Usually when we sign a licensing contract, there is a term of license, or well, actually multiple terms, like for instance, how long is this license going to be? It's usually one to three years on which product and in what quantity and what's the percentage of cut you know the company will pay to the artist so all these terms are listed very clearly at the end of the term the end of that contract the manufacturer and the artist can decide do we want to continue or renew the contract or do we want to renegotiate some of the terms or should we just end it every time when the contract ends the artist basically gets that licensing right back to herself or himself, and then she can decide again if, they, if she wants to license out this particular image to somebody else. I actually never wanted to do art licensing. It kind of happened to me very naturally. So very long story short, I met up with an art mentor. She's part of the licensing world, and then she saw my work. She said, you should go straight into licensing. And she was very kind. She introduced me to her own licensing agents, and everything sort of kind of just happened from there. But I will tell you this. I've been doing this for almost two years now. And uh, what I have learned is that this is actually a fantastic idea, an opportunity for, for any professional artist out there. Licensing art, the business model is not a one-time sales model, meaning that unlike you know exhibiting and selling your work through a gallery, you only get to sell that work once and that's it. You get paid once and that's it. If you are an artist who's, who's looking for residual income, licensing art actually will give you that through repeated licenses with various buyers at the same time.
Hey, Stella. What? Is art licensing for everyone? No, art licensing is not for everyone. Why not? Well, there are multiple reasons. Reason number one, do you like to paint things that you don't know how to paint? And if your answer is no, then don't do it. <laughs> do you like to be told what to paint? If your answer to that is also no, then don't do it. And most importantly, do you mind having to revise what you have painted and make adjustments based on what the buyer is looking for? Again, if your answer is still no to that, then don't do it. Like I said again and again, you know, being a licensing artist, we don't paint what we want. We paint what the industry needs. So a lot of times you have to put aside your personal preference, especially if you are not comfortable working outside of you know your own comfort zone that you only like to paint one thing in one style in one color palette just don't do it you'll be miserable when you get a lot of revision requests I'm expecting to see art buyers you know from these um, home goods home decor company I think I was in contact with one but no names yet because I don't want to jinx it and I definitely have two people coming going to swim by my booth to say hi so hopefully I'll get something out of it but it, yeah it's mostly art buyers I also expect to see a lot of manufacturers you know who creates home furnishing and who may just need some accent to be printed or add or, or even embroider onto their home furnishing goods so we all see oh in fact i should actually do a post show video and let you guys know how it all really went right this before and after okay without getting myself into trouble think about target that's a huge company they have the home departments they have the arts and crafts department they also do back to school stationery eh, stationaries and planners that's a buyer right there you have Kohl's all the major retailers you know they also work with suppliers suppliers obviously include manufacturers so their manufacturers underneath the target umbrella they will come and they themselves will also look for things that they can turn around and show it to the target buyer and then of course you have the much more niche and elevator interior design you know firms there's like paragon design that's a really big one and um you also have like um let's say wall art print companies lots of art prints company there's the big canvas canvas.com art.com and the list goes on and on and on oh my god <laughs> um okay so i was told i joined one of the surtex webinar and uh, I was told that you should come with at least 100 artworks ready to be licensed. Um, a lot of the artists, they've been doing this for years and years and years. So they literally come with thousands of works ready to go. This is my year two. And out of year two, I have been sick for 1.8 years. <laughs> so during the webinar, I have 12 artworks ready to go. And that was back in March, uh, February, I'm sorry. So from February to today, I have 120 artworks ready to go. And there's a reason why the circles are getting darker underneath my eye. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so I'm going to start with how did I develop a well-rounded uh, portfolio. So I learned from one of my uh, agents that because this is my first year doing it, I should really focus on a range of subjects that I'm actually really good at and so that the buyers will have um, options and a range of things that they can look at. So personally, as an artist, I'm really good with florals. I'm also really good with abstract, abstract landscape. How did that happen? I have no idea. I went to school for illustration, so I'm still trying to figure that one out. But anyway, long story short is that's pretty much where I started. And a lot of my works um, attract uh, wall art buyers. So then I pretty much took all that information, combined it and say, let me create, let's say 50 florals because florals always sell it. They're almost seasonless. They, they can be put on everything. Then the second thing I did was abstract. Abstract also almost always sells and also um, seasonless. From there, the abstract evolved into an abstract landscape. So I have about 20 abstract landscapes. Then I realized that celestial spiritual thing is a thing. So I started doing a lot of like astrological uh, paintings, you know, which kind of organically evolved from abstract landscape as well. I also got a thing for animals. I just love painting animals and I like to think I'm pretty good at it. So I started with cats and dogs. Then I say to myself, why not evolve that into holidays? Because usually buyers come to big trade shows to buy holidays. Holiday is the biggest development across the board. Doesn't matter if you're in home goods, fashion, paper products, whatever it is. It's the biggest selling season. So 
Instead of doing Santa Claus, because every other artist is doing Santa Claus, I decided to create a group of uh, mischievous animals in holiday attires or doing like really funny holiday boo-boos. So I have, I think I have a unicorn, <laughs> a kitty and a uh, Labrador puppy. You know, just combining what I'm good at, which is painting animals with the theme of holidays. And then obviously I come from fashion. So a big chunk of my uh, portfolio also have uh, fashion illustration in it and so all of that being said is I think the my short answer is know what your strengths are, what comes naturally to you, and then you expand that to incorporate what um, the elements are that the market is actually looking for, and then you just build collection after collection based off of that information. Yes, the gallery portfolio is not the same as the Surtex portfolio or in this case any trade show portfolio. In the gallery, they want to see your concept. Where are you going? What's your trajectory as an artist? What are your thoughts? Why are you so obsessed about this one thing that you keep painting or creating? So that's totally different from you know creating a portfolio that shows what the market wants. To be perfectly point blank, a gallery portfolio is not necessarily developed to sell but a, a trade show portfolio is a selling portfolio. You want to make sure like majority of all the artworks listed in this portfolio is licensed out. In my fashion days, you know, we strive for a 67% sell through. So out of hundred products that we create, we hope that 67 will get picked up. Um, I don't really know what the statistic is for a licensing portfolio. I'll find out once I do more of these type of shows. Um, so that's the expectation for a trade show portfolio, but not so much for a gallery portfolio. Gallery portfolio is really to show um, your fans, the audience and the curators, you know, who you are as an artist, what your vision is and where you're going from here. I would say, let the market tell you that. I personally don't have an answer to that. Like in the very beginning, when I first started this whole journey, I have absolutely no idea what I was supposed to paint. So what I did was I didn't restrict myself what I should be painting for, you know, the market. And next thing I knew, my abstract was standing out. My my animals were coming back, you know, repeatedly from different buyers. They were like, oh, can you do another one? Can you do another one? So have the market tell you if you should just focus on this one area or two or three or multiple. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I have to laugh because I have two goals. Number one is to, to let my art speak for itself. And number two, to be discovered, to be seen, because I really don't have plan B at this point. <laughs> That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, I am not the best person to answer that because I literally just started my journey. And from my understanding, in order to see really good money, you need to actually let your licenses compound over time. Again, it's a residual income and then each license will add to another one. And as the year goes on and on and on, you actually start to accumulate more and more and more. So it's not a single salary at all. Another elements you have to consider is that different product categories offers different standard rate you know like stationaries like gift cards birthday cards it's like a three to seven percent commission rate you get per order and that order can vary from a thousand gift cards to thirty thousand gift cards so it's almost impossible for me to answer that question but what I will tell you is having met up with some licensing artists who's been around for a long time we're talking about 20 30 40 years Rumor has it, some of them actually make 30000 a month. I have yet to see that number yet, but that's what I'm aspiring to. So stay tuned when I get there. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me in my studio today. I seriously need to get some rest before the show starts on May 9th to 10th, which is literally next week. <laughs> So yeah, um, I will be doing another video, a follow-up video to this one where I really talk about what really happened at Surtex. So it's kind of like an afterthought. So if you yourself are an artist and you're thinking about joining Surtex or becoming a licensing artist, definitely check out that video uh, when it gets published. All right, ciao. Okay, last but not least, this is actually my uniform apron <laughs> I'll be wearing at the show. Here's my name. 
obviously I'm the artist so ask me anything <laughs> if you don't get it and then I most likely will be walking around with my my trusted pen brush whatever